I'm here to meet Neil Morrissey, actor, badly behaved man, and now a hotelier in Larne. So what, so what brought you down to Larne then? Why Larne? I've been coming down to Pembrokeshire, Carmarthen show for, for years and years and years. Because oh. I've got some mates who had small holdings around here. Yeah. And it was brilliant getting out of the city when I was at drama school and just post drama school. Yeah. And coming down here and jumping off cliffs and shooting <laughs> guns and riding quad bikes and going out and drinking with impunity and, <laughs> and just having a really good time. But the first time really Larn was because Matt, my business partner, had already bought this place and was considering to turn it into a, a hotel and he was right. already on, on the way. Do you think you'll end up down here eventually? Would you like to or? Yeah, I can see myself spending a lot more time mm. down here. And I think I've got one of those careers, you know, at the moment where I'm, I'm kind of here, there and everywhere, mm. months and months at a time, so it's difficult to pinpoint what you actually think considered to be your home. Yeah. But yeah, I would love to spend an awful lot more time down there. I find it very... Um, Cathartic, you know, yeah. it's, it gets your feet back on the ground. I mean, they don't let you get away with too much. <laughs> I was doing this audience with in Allenford the other day. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, in the evening with, and, and, uh, and Matt said to him, uh, so Neil, Neil's, where's Neil? He said he's doing an evening with Neil Morrissey at, at Allenford. He went, who want to go to a f an evening with him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, did he get asked some bizarre questions or anything along those? What were some of the questions? Um, so, oh, yeah, someone said to me, what do you really think of Leslie Ash's lips? <laughs> I said, oh, come on, you know. I know, yeah, come be on. Cool. Yeah. But uh, you must have asked, been asked a few questions that night about Bob the Builder, because that's, that, that is, because obviously... Bob was very popular. And Bob had a moustache. Did he really? Yeah, the I said, original Bob? The original Bob looked like a member of, um, what's that band that did YMCA? Uh, village People. <laughs> The construction worker. Bob looked like the lead singer in The Village People. <laughs> I said, lose the tash and you might have a chance. <laughs> Neil must have picked up some tips from his alter ego in the building trade, as he's done a fantastic job on Hearst House. With his business partners, he's transformed it into a classy place to stay. And on top of that, he owns not one, but two pubs in Larne. Can't fault it. Over a hearty breakfast, we discussed what it was like to be lord of your very own manor. What do you do in your spare time with all this land? Well, I mean, the land really is not for development. I mean, it's literally um, keeping it um, to, to ourselves, really, yeah. you know, to, to their customers. If they want to go and get their feet muddy, go out and walk on it. We've got a great field out the back. I've got a couple of little sort of racing quads. All right. So they're good fun. And, you know, my boy likes them as well. And plus, we've got a shoot set up out the back as well. A little bit of clay pigeon shooting. Yeah, I mean, it's literally there, 30 seconds, and it's some set up so you can come and have a shoot with me, see how, oh, we'll see, to... see how you do. Come on in. Paul, <laughs> oh, let's have it. Morning. <laughs> We've shot before, so. I have shot before. We should be safe. Short or short after? Short after, day. I was, I was running for my farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Put a couple of quid in each. Let's see who can hit the most. Hey, Stuart, we need your quid. I've got a yeah, five. You'll have to have a fiver. <laughs> what a mug! <laughs> <laughs> Are these London boys come down here? I know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the end of the year. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Watch out for the old Brian May there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me have a go with my own gun, see yeah, if I can shoot anything with this. Boys are right there. I didn't run there, was I over him or under no. him? You missed him. <laughs> Very helpful instructors yeah. I've got here, as you can see. I can't even understand you. Come on, hit one of them. <laughs> yeah! Look at the guts. I'm not getting none of them, I can see you coming. I'll <laughs> probably hit that cow down there. Yeah, we, we've been shooting them for years and never hit <laughs> yeah, one. And they don't move. No, they don't move. <laughs> Last one, last pair. Oh, not that one. <laughs> I got one anyway. <laughs> one out of two. What did you get? Four? Five of them. Five. Yeah. <laughs> After firing a few shots, Neil decided it was time to fire the cameraman. Don't try and, if you don't try and follow it, if you just stay in the middle of the line. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Like you're holding the gun, you're saying. Yeah. Not yeah. Sure which one to pick. So it'll go like as if it's the gun. Yeah, sure. Do you want me to do it for you? 
I'm going to do everything. <laughs> Cameraman as well, no? <laughs> Well, is it recording? No, 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 yeah, I'll record it. Oh, okay, you're running. Yeah. It's got to come up this bit, doesn't it? Mr. Morrissey on Job camera. Team. I want to see Clay's dust as yet. From the cross, yeah. Paul. Got it? Paul. Oh, didn't get that one. Get, get this one, though. I can't, this camera is still in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Ready? Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> Top, well then. I've, got, I've definitely got one coming across. I'm not yeah, sure well, about the others. One more than me. Yeah. <laughs> all this will be all um, new rooms all down here, and you can see the height of it, and then yeah. the barn roof goes above it as well, so we can have, like, double and triple-sized rooms That's in right, there. yeah. Oh, you can just have all... a quick poke in here. Yeah, of course. And you get oh, a God, you feeling see, of yeah, the, the height, size yeah, of the yeah, place. Yeah. But imagine that um, the room I'm going to take you in in a minute was like this when we first saw it. Really? Yeah, I mean, it was all kind of falling down like this. And um, we had to get all the slates off because they were blowing. But all these barns are original and protected, historical. So are they all listed and stuff, are they? All listed. Yeah. So we have to, we're in a very strict building, building regime, yeah, etc. Yeah. And, um, I mean, these originally would have had animals in, but we'll get some more human animals in them when we get them done up. So we've got stacks of these things here, which are like... If you go to Reclamation Yard, those bricks will cost you about £5 pound a piece. A piece, yeah. Because they're the old Victorian double bricks, floor bricks, which are, we oh, find yeah, all course, over the place. Of course, yeah. Be prepared. I know. Be prepared for... Who knows? Oh, look at this. And it's lovely and warm as well. Yeah. It's so warm. Well, but the walls are this thick. I was going to say, yeah. I know. As soon as you get it up to temperature, yeah, then once... it stays warm. Do you, so, oh, it's just the radiator you got in here as well. We've got, we got yeah. one radiator and one radiator there. Oh, I'm yeah. We've got the, the log burning fire in there. Yeah. Oh, this All is this. great. This shower is fantastic. I know. And it's a good big double bath yeah. as well. So the it really is. top bath. Well, all hotel rooms are designed for, for fantastic sex. Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Oh, but this and is that, lovely. The Swedish. Oh, that's great. Wood burners, and you can see the heat that comes off that as well. God, because the chimney goes all the way up. Yeah, through the beams there, you get uh, the heat comes off the chimney all the way up as well. But you can feel it just standing here, going yeah, up to the uh, the pad, the, the palace of sex. <laughs> <laughs> so do most of the rooms look like this then? They're all of a similar style, but they're not all this large. I, I got you. One and seven. That's what all the ones in the barn will be this size. This, yeah, 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 yeah. The uh, drunken game in this room is: can you jump from one beam to the other? Shut up. Yeah, really? I, yeah, I've done it. Have you done it? Yeah. <laughs> but, but don't get not asking. tonight, Josephine. <laughs> well, do you want to walk through the kitchen? Should we go to the kitchens? Yeah, let's just go to the kitchens. I'll, just, I'll just give you a quick walkthrough because they're probably prepping for lunch. Yeah. Hello. 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 We'll be prepping up, up from the next 15 minutes yeah. for lunches. What's for lunch today? He doesn't know yet. <laughs> well, we've got a regular lunch menu. So. <laughs> Some of my favourite cupboards. <laughs> <laughs> we wonder why. Uh, she's our chef. Oh, what's, what's on the lunch <laughs> menu today? Anything you want, sir. Anything you want. <laughs> hey. That's yeah, what I'm thinking. I know, we'll get to that. Cheese on toast. <laughs> Cheese on toast, is it? Neil's face. That's what I had last night for your supper. <laughs> That's it, on toast. <laughs> <laughs> it's a businessman. Businessman on the phone doing business. That's fantastic. It's beginning to dawn on me that Hearst House is no rich actor's folly. Neil obviously knows his stuff and is serious about the whole project. Because you know it takes years for this yellow lichen to grow. Yeah. And the way to get it to grow quicker is to paste your walls with yoghurt. Is that right? Live yoghurt. If you've got to buy a statue or something for your garden. Yeah. Because this yellow lichen, it's, it's really, you know, it's beautiful stuff, and all this other little stuff grows out of it. Yeah. But it takes years for, for, the, for the bacteria to get into the stones. So you just paste it with... Paste um, it with yoghurt? Live yoghurt. Oh and in about a year's time, you'll have the yellow lichen. Ah. Oh, yes. Tip, tip for all your Gardner, drinks. Gardner Morrissey. <laughs> not only the builder, but Gardner too. <laughs> well, I do play Farmer Pickles as well. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So what did the old locusts think of you in Larn, the old bit of a star coming down and... Uh... Well, I think people were a bit um, sort of worried at first because, you know, I suppose there's reputations of people coming down here and I suppose just buying loads of things up and never being, never being seen, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And just living in London and staying there and not coming back down, yeah. Yeah, and just weekends and, and that, you know, for that kind of thing. But we're, we're kind of very much into the, 
the community here. I mean, we employ 74 people, and 90% uh, of them are local. The first thing you've done was the film, wasn't it, with Mel Gibson? Mel Gibson, <laughs> Anthony Hopkins. That's right. The Bounty, it was what called. What was that like? It was brilliant. Well, it was my, my first job out of drama school. Yeah. And I'm um, 20 years old, and I auditioned for this part, which I get. Yeah. So I'm in a movie with Tony Hopkins, Mel Gibson, Dan Day-Lewis, Liam Neeson, Edward Fox, <laughs> Laurence Olivier. God. I know, I thought, this is he <laughs> acting smacking. <laughs> Straight in. I'm in there. And not only that, I've only been on a plane once in my life. Oh, really? Um, to Belfast, and now I'm flying to Tahiti. <laughs> you know, I'm going out to Tahiti at my first location job. Of course, I've never been anywhere like it since, you know. But I had my 21st birthday out in Tahiti. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I went out, heavily out on the tear with Mel Gibson. Was he, is he a nice guy, like? He was brilliant, yeah. We, were, we got on really well during those days. I mean, it's a long time ago now, 20-odd yeah. years. Yeah. And, uh, but he was only 27 at the time, and I was 21. Right. And we had uh, a right good laugh. <laughs> to <laughs> say the least. Yeah. Because that, well, that must be mad for you, because you went from, like, being thrust into this thing or being this heartthrob and, you know, yeah. and all this kind of thing. It must have been... Was it, was it, did it get to the point it was walking down the street and it was all kind of, whoa! A bit, sometimes. Or was that men behaving, behaving badly? Men behaving badly did that, mostly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When, um, and also, because we were doing it for a year, maybe a year and a half before it actually caught on. So Martin and I were big old drinking pals anyway. That's how... Oh, you did know each other anyway? He recommended me for the part. All oh, right. Yeah. Gary, if... I was a girl, <laughs> with a girl's bottom and everything. <laughs> Would you marry me? Of course, mate. Oh, mate. <laughs> was, it, um, was it something you wanted to get into, comedy, or was it more of a serious thing you wanted, or was it just that's the way you'd have Acting was what I yeah. wanted to get into. Yeah. I mean, I don't think comedy or tragedy are uh, any better or worse. But uh, comedy just came along, and uh, I just got known for it, really. I mean, Boone was... A mixture, really. It was what's called. A, it was what's called a comedy drama. Yeah. So the, it was basically Michael Elphick going out, sorting out loads of serious problems. When it was all getting a bit too heavy, cut to the daft get <laughs> on a motorbike. Are you? Me getting, you know, doing something stupid in a police station or something, or getting punched. Generally. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. you know what? I had um, all the way through that series nine years, and then I, was, I was, did it. Did it for. And um, I was Rocky the heartthrob. I never once had a screen kiss. Did I, you not? I had one kiss with Kelly Hunter, and it was cut. Oh. <laughs> I, knew, I used to get a peck on the cheek. My, most of my fan mail was either from mothers or men. <laughs> once men? I had, I had a, a series of letters once off this one guy who wanted me to go to his house and do professional wrestling. Shut up. <laughs> You're joking. But he said to me, it's OK, because the room's padded. I won't hurt you. <laughs> I can check you out, but we want it. It would be fine. <laughs> After years of being hounded by the media, it's easy to understand the attraction this area holds for Neil. The peace and quiet must be a relief from the hustle of London life. This is one of his favourite walks from Hurst House all the way to Larn. Just coming up in a minute. On the right hand side, we'll just get through here. You should be able to see the castle. Ah, the big castell. And look at that. Just through the trees. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic, isn't it? It is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And just further around, then, that's Dylan Thomas Boathouse. Yeah. And it goes all into some woodland and everything there, and there's more walks up through there. I mean, the village is so little. God. And I'm told, I haven't done, um, studied the history on it, but it, I think it was blown up by the English. <laughs> it's typical, isn't it? Yeah. Big Norman castle, isn't it? Still, it's got right. room for an extension. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> of course, as a West Wales newcomer, Neil's had to face a certain amount of local Mickey taking. But they call you Lord Lano, don't they? Well, they... <laughs> a bit of a joke, obviously we know. Yeah. I think that's more of a media yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the. Um... They'll, uh, they have to live in Lyme for th at least three years. Right. So I'm just coming up, because I've got property here, I'm just coming up to be able to, to, to be nominated to I be part of the system. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And my mum's fella, Trevor. Yeah. Because my mum lives in the village as well. Does she really? Yeah. So oh. it's just outside, actually, just in a little place called Broadway, about half a mile away. And uh, he said he'll nominate me. <laughs> and that night, a few of them, when they're so all in there. So he's a proper Lani. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Trevor's a Lani. Yeah. Right, right. There you go. You. Yeah, you could, you've got to be a Lani. You've got to be a Lani. That's fantastic. Otherwise, you don't get it. Good it is. Good deal, man. Look. Right there. 
Oops. He's probably a bit deaf. He's, he's, yeah. He's a bit much than Jeff. It's almost the Lord of Lard. <laughs> <laughs> is this your castle? Yeah, it is, actually. Well, there was a rumour, and there was rumours going around for ages that we'd bought it. Oh, really? Yeah, because there was an auction came up recently, and um, it went up for auction. And we, were, we were interested at one point. I wonder how much something like that would go for. <laughs> I think it was only about 750000 <laughs> So you two can have your own yeah. castle. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah. Be a bit cold in the winter, though, wouldn't it? No roof. Notice all the locals give me away. Yeah. It's taken me three years of living here before I get the finger now. Really? Yeah. <laughs> right, uh, I get the finger now. Now I'm, now I'm local. Yeah. <laughs> that is the weirdest puke I've ever seen. <laughs> that is Somebody the... stood you and me and gone, that. No. <laughs> that is projectile vomit. No, I'd have to get someone out there and get that wiped off. That doesn't look nice at all, does no, it? No, not at all. And this is the new three mariners. After that healthy constitutional, time to redress the balance. And where better to suck on a pint or two than in another of Neil's favourite local haunts, his very own pub, which made this one of the few times in my life I was confident the owner had no intention of throwing me out, no matter what I did. Well, right, chaps. There's a long way to go here. You roll in. Yeah. Good, because there's a long way to go here. It's a really long trek. I hope you can keep up to my other pub. OK. It's uh, especially great, huge distance now here. It's a long way to this pub, isn't it? Oh, honestly, they'd be so tired. We should have called a cab. So this is where Mr. Thomas used to come and drink. This is exactly where Dylan, Dylan used to himself. Drink. And um, him and Caitlin. Yeah. Have had many, twenty pints of black and tan. Many a scrap in here. Oh, really? Got, Seriously? We got these photos. This is in, this is in Browns now, and there's Dylan. God, I that's Dylan when he was a young fella. God. Yeah, that, that's him yeah. in here with Caitlin, that's the age, but it wasn't baby face he was. I think I he was know. in his um, late 20s there, before he'd... Um, he actually just about made it in America, and he used to travel then from here to America, but this is Brown's, the original bar. Right. Um, these little people, and you see, not one draft, it was all bottles. All bit. bottles, yeah. All bottles, and that's Dylan. What a good place to be. And so we decided to honour Dylan Thomas's memory with a session of poetry reading and drinking. Luckily for me, the poetry reading was optional. Neil is obviously a massive Dylan fan, though I personally preferred him before he went electric. But hey, what do I know? History's steeped in this place. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. And yeah. I'd love to have witnessed a couple of scraps with him and Caitlin. Oh, I could have, yeah, yeah, I bet they would have been crazy. Apparently they were cat and dog. It was absolutely crazy. Is it anybody? Mad for each, mad about each other, passionately in yeah, love. In love. And yeah. therefore passionately at loggerheads yeah. the whole time. Is, is it anybody, would there be anybody alive today then that would. Oh, fuck. It wouldn't be surprising if um, some of the boys were in here oh, now. I should... hadn't had conversations or were yeah. fe featured in the book. It was yeah, I should imagine, yeah. Sort of 40s, 50s. So. Yeah. And there certainly there are relatives of people who were in the book, and quite a lot of people didn't really like him. Seriously? Well, because he derided a lot of people in the book. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be calling him the fat, ugly man in the corner <laughs> of the wall, he drinks this, or something like that, do you know what I mean? And, yeah. they, and they all know who it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are that person. Do you know how far we've walked from Browns to here? Yeah, yeah. Right, well, quite often he'd take a room in Browns because he couldn't make Rather the walk Rather than home. coming back down here, you're joking He me. was so drunk, they would just throw him up the stairs. <laughs> so it's like a three-minute walk, yeah. and he couldn't make it. And this, I think, well, you'll see in a second. So he'd come up to this here and write in here, would he? This is exactly where he would sit and write all the stuff, but that's where Under Milk was written in there. Amazing, eh? It is. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Well, would it be sort of, you know, 12 foot by 8 foot? Yeah. Garage and Garage. Savage. Genius going off. I know. It's crazy. And uh, he lived. It's just here. Oh, God, look at that. Yeah. Well, they've refurbed it. It looks really gorgeous. What a place to live. Yeah, I know. What a place to live. <laughs> Imagine going from New York back to here. I New know. York in the 50s. Yeah. And then coming back, or in the late 40s, and then coming back here. From the land of the speakeasy to Larn. I know, I know. Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. I suppose the thing that uh, I got to touch on two number ones. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's got to be good. No, but one thing I wanted to ask you was: 
Have you ever when, had one? No. <laughs> <laughs> a number one album. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I've no, never oh, seen oh, yeah, My album was number one too. <laughs> too was it? Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> We'd better get some work done. Sold 1.6 million copies. <laughs> Got an Ivan Avello. Did you? Shut up! No. Never to God. Yeah, I was sitting between Stevie Wonder and Annie Lennox. You're joking. Yeah, me. that's the Stevie's table and there's Annie's table. Oh my God! So I'm having a wee chat with Annie Lennox and Stevie Wonder. I slapped him on his back when he went up for his award. You know. <laughs> Come on, Stevie. Well done. Yeah, get up, here, buddy. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> and. Uh, and so our guy went up to go and collect the award, the highest selling single of the year. And, uh, well, you know what, have you been to the Ivan Novellos? No, I've never been, no, no. I'm surprised you don't have been in No. So anyway, so they, uh, the Ivan Novellos is the music industry's music awards. Yeah. You know, and they don't, there's no cameras there, no TV, nothing like All that. All right. It is pure, just music award, and it's everyone was there, the luminaries of the show, of the music business. And so the guy goes up, who wrote Bob the Builder tune, and says, thank you very much, and it is, it's like smattering. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, because everyone's like, mm, mm, how did you, how did you not win? Yeah. And he goes, and I've got in an audience with me, I've got Neil Morrissey who sang the tune, Neil Morrissey, Bob the Builder! So yeah, there's about 15 people go. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, get him! And we're talking about there's been tumultuous, there's been standing ovations and everything, you know, and I've got 15, a smattering of 15 people polite clapping in the background, you know, and I walk up on the stage and I said, I know, I know we've come in a little bit from offside on this one. <laughs> and what say? I said, but who would have thought, who would have thought that nine inches of plastic could give so much pleasure to so many people? <laughs> <laughs> and they all clapped and I walked off. <laughs> and how was that? The bit I find extraordinary about your life is growing up in a foster home and kind of your I you kind of wanted to get out of it out, out, out of the family home in a strange way and then go into a foster home so you could study is that right well there was it was a slightly um, awkward thing yeah but by the time I got to um, about 14 15 yeah I was, been, I was in children's homes from the age of 10 right and by the time I got to about 14 15 I was doing so well at school they did offer that I could go home if I wanted oh really but I said I'm so into the school and so into the sort of whole um, examination period, you know, the build-up to it. Yeah. So I said I'd rather stay on, actually, and stay in the school. So I did that bit, and then I did my O-levels, which I did very well at, got, got all more. And then um, I got into sixth form college, because there wasn't a sixth form department in the school. Right. So the, uh, all the people who didn't have that in their schools went to this place near us in Longton to go to uh, carry on for the A-levels. But um, because when I was 17, the care order that was placed on me at 10 was um, ended. Right. Um, so that you're supposed to go to a working boys' hostel. You're not allowed to stay in the children's <coughs> home system. Really? Yeah. <coughs> so I couldn't carry on my education if I was still in the children's home system unless I was fostered. Yeah. So I put a notice up on the board at Sixth Form College, foster parents urgently required, <laughs> and uh, I had a few turn up and I auditioned a few. <laughs> Can uh, <laughs> he sing? Can he dance? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Classical Shakespeare now. <laughs> and uh, I got in with uh, this lovely family, who actually were, were a fantastic family, uh, the Langstons, who took me in, um, both nurses, but they were also both interested in the amateur theatre, which is where I was working oh, right. in my evenings, yeah. doing this stuff at this amateur theatre as well. So it worked out really well, yeah. And I was fostered for a couple of years. So we've done a bit of clay pigeon shooting, young yep, man. We're we back have. at Hearst House now, and uh, we're on your lovely quads. Yeah, and, and don't you think they look like characters from Bob the Builder? <laughs> they do, actually. <laughs> can we fix it? Yes, we, we can. can. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> I've never ridden one before, so that's my first time on a quad. <laughs> what, an was, expert? A veritable expert! expert. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was really, really good. After a blast on the quads, it was time for something a bit more cultured. This is where Mr Morrissey buys all his antiques. And he's had a lot shipped up to uh, London to his own house, but he never pays the price, price marked up on the things. So see if we can haggle a bit. Some 
great things for me, which I've just used as an ashtray for like three quid, four quid. <laughs> it's probably worth about two grand. Yeah. <laughs> Weird psychedelic ashtrays. <laughs> ashtrays, mate. In my house, that's what yeah. they are. This is, oh, this is the old uh, Commode, isn't it? Yeah! Yay. Hey, this is a cracker. Look at the Commode. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I'm at you. I tell you, after a night out, that's not going to last long, is it? No. 79 quid. Hmm. I wonder where it's from. Oops, it's broken anyway. Oh, that's down to a five, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Glaston Pottery is the one that closed down, and it was opposite of the pottery factory that I actually worked in. Oh, for, really? For a little while, and I've got a little collection of teapots. So I'm just a little terrible hotch kit, kitsch teapot collector. <laughs> it's the old Tommy Cooper joke, you know that? What's that? Oh, I have a great day today. I found, I went to my loft. I found a Picasso and a Stradivarius. Unfortunately, Picasso was a crap violin maker and Stradivarius couldn't paint. <laughs> so Seen some point. bargains today. Oh, yeah. Very nice bargains. <laughs> See you all later. See you now. There you go. Four doors as well. The little emporium. That's fantastic. Well, Thank you for a lovely day. I know, thank you. It's been, it's been fantastic. Been very interesting. Good to meet you as well, actually. You know, you're my first genuine real rock star. <laughs> Apart from well, Tom, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And the fun of incremental. I think the quad biking was pretty good, though. I did enjoy that. Yeah, I did too, but you know, it's, it's it really exacerbated my hip problem. I was going to say, oh, your wrist has gone. And my wrist's gone a bit funny. I was having difficulty holding my pint down. I had some hang on, but I'm not sure if that's quad biking. Anyway, it could be something <laughs> to do with my right wrist. The one thing I haven't asked you all day, leave it to the end, is. Um, your kind of uh, relationship with the press, really, that they yeah. kind of get on your tits? Well, they, well, it gets on your nerves, yeah. But yeah. The whole thing is, the thing is, when you learn, once you've been sort of hammered a couple of times, to deal with it, you know? Yes. You have to build a relationship with the press. You can't just um, let them rule your life. Yeah. So you have to be in contact, and you have to sort, sort out the, the differences. I mean, they need information. They've got a job to do. They have to sell newspapers. And, um, and I've got things to do as well that I, that I need the newspapers for. Yeah. I mean, on one hand, they can bat here for some um, completely untrue story. I mean, things happen all the week. Every week, I get a phone call from someone saying, oh, you were here. A newspaper had me somewhere where I wasn't two weeks ago. But fortunately, doing something really naughty as well. <laughs> And, uh, That's always the best bit. Yeah, but I wasn't. <laughs> the whole point was, as well, I was in my house with my girlfriend, who's a lawyer, and a judge. You know, oh, so, so, you. so I said, go on, then print the story. <laughs> Leave it run. Yeah, let it run. <laughs> I can do with a couple hundred thousand. Yeah. So that's, that's the kind of routine, really. Yeah. yeah. But it always seems a lot worse, I guess. It was, it was only one bad period, and that was the sort of Les Dennis, Amanda Holden period. I was, yeah, I didn't, yeah, that was going to be the last thing to but finish off. So but that was... Ancient history. history. But that was to be nuts for you, because that was kind of every day, wasn't it, yeah. more or less? You know, you opened yeah. the paper, and there you were. Well, I was walking out of my house to 70 photographers outside really? my house. Really? How many? Yeah. 70, 80, I mean, more. I mean, I was coming out of sitting on my car as a worst. Ah, oh, because you just want to kind of... Well, I did. Did I, you really? I ran at them one time, yeah. <laughs> And uh, did a dive bomb onto the whole f crowd of them. God, because that would kind of drive me insane, that kind of thing. They, even they're sitting on your property, that's yeah. the kind well, of. People said to me, why don't you go and stay somewhere else for a while? I said, this is my home. Yeah. And I, if I do that, it kind of is, it's going to compound the problem. It makes yeah. me look as though I'm feeling guilty about something. Yeah. You know, so uh, I didn't bother doing that at all. Well, thank you for today. Hey, it's been brilliant. a pleasure. Enjoy Let's your have, pint. Let's man. have some beer. Cheers. Cheers. Take care.